Hello and welcome to the video for the basic audio production class from Monday, August 24th. Hello. Hola. How you doing? We're alive. <laughs> That's a that's a plus. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. I was worried because uh, did anybody see the articles that Zoom was down today? What? Uh, Zoom Zoom was down for a while today, and I was I was wondering if we'd be able to have our meeting or not. But looks like we're going to be okay. So good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Pretty good. Awesome. Uh, I'm finally here. Thank God. Yay. Hello, Brandon. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Because I just got this new mic. And, yeah, it's got uh, a little bit of either echo or reverb on it or something. Yeah, I'm still trying to fix that. Like, I got it yesterday, so oh. I just plugged it in this morning. Cool. What kind did you get? Uh... I think this one is box. Condenser microphone. Ah, a condenser microphone. Okay. Uh, did you pay a lot for it or a little? Uh, well, fifty bucks is a lot. Then. But I just thought, you know, why, you know, like borrow my friends if I can just have my own that I'm going to be using a lot, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's a good plan. Hello. How you doing, Carl? Uh, just, uh, can you hear me by any chance? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, just, uh, dealing with shit. How's that? <laughs> dealing with shit. That's a good, uh, that's a good overarching uh, summary? Well, uh, my wife, uh, who's a, a nurse in the ER at Banner, is starting her uh, her advanced uh, physio something for whatever, some medical crap that's way above my head. And uh, right. so she's waiting to get her stuff right now. She's also a full time uh, post grad student. Oh, okay. for her, yes, yeah, to be a medical di base. Oh. I can be too Italiano. <laughs> Say hi. 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 Today, today is her day off. But as she waits for the computer for Grand Canyon University to load in, so we're both kind of going to school. So weird. It is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird. It's 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 definitely weird times. I uh I wonder what normal is going to be like when we get back to any sort of normal. Yeah. Uh, besides, uh, you know, I, I do apologize for this to ask you a basic question. Uh, how are, are we going to also turn in any audio or journal or video stuff we do uh, through the Google Doc uh, platform? Or do you have another way of doing that? Yeah, it's all going to be Google Docs. Okay. So anything, you could, anything you can create, you can upload to that folder. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, well, why don't I get started taking some attendance, uh, and then we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and bring up my little attendance screen, and then we'll do that. Okay, so pima.edu, and then I got to log in. Okay. All right, and now... Bringing up your class. Attendance tracking. And it's just taking a second to pop up here. Okay, good. So now we're at basic audio production. Okay. So let me see who is here. Uh, okay, I'll put my participants window. It's right there. And let's see. So Max is here. I saw Max's icon. I did. Oh yeah, there it is. 
Uh, so I'm going to mark in here if my little pointer will actually mark. Okay. Uh, Brianna. Don't see Brianna on my list, so. I'm here. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. You're just, you're just iPhone, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I don't have a computer to Thank use you. right now. <laughs> oh, um, can you uh, call me Bree, too? That's what I go by. Oh, yeah, let me put that on my list. So, okay. uh, Brianna wants to call, be, be, be called Bree. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's see. So, let me go to my basic audio. Okay, here we go. Okay, Brianna is Bree. All right. Oh, good. I got this list up so I can call people what their actual names are. Okay, good. Uh, so let's see. So and I got to be able to see this as well. Three things at once. All right. Okay. So now next on the list is Ken. So let's see, I'm looking on my list and Ken's here. Um, okay, uh, Vlad is here. Uh, D is here. Trinity I saw, yep. Um, and let's see, Brandon is here. Uh, Gabby is here. Uh, Jillian is here. Uh, Carl is here. Cam is here. Uh, let's see, is Luke here? Luke, 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 and Luke. I don't see a Luke. Uh, let's see. Now, um, I wonder if you could pronounce your name for me, uh, V-E-N-U-S-T-E. -E. Oh, that's uh, Venust. Venust. Okay, yeah. thank you. Hello, Venust. Hi. Okay, uh, Venust. Okay, that's a nice name. I like that. Venust. Thank you. And let's see, Chris is not here. Okay, uh, Michael. Michael, 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 I don't see Michael. Dylan is here. Abby, Gail, Abby, 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 Abby. I don't see Abby. Oh, I see Abby. Okay, there she is. Um, and then William Wallace. Yeah, he's here. Which, let's see, is William Bill? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I think I think you're a Bill. Uh, and Emmanuel is Iman. And let's see if he's here. Iman, 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 Iman. Yes. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, anybody I didn't call that's here and didn't get the privilege of being called? Okay, uh, looks like Michael just came in, so let me mark him. Okay, all right, good. So uh, we're all here, a lot of us. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do was look at this list that is the list of when we're going to meet um, when we actually come into school and check and see uh, if there's some people who weren't here last week, if we can get them on the list. So I think, who am I looking for? Is it Brandon? Yeah. So Brandon, you're there, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. So Brandon, I have a question for you. Um, when we come into, you know, this class is like, it's half virtual and half uh, in person. And uh, which is actually not technically correct. It's more like three quarters virtual and one, one quarter in person, meaning that every two weeks, a single student is going to come in once to Pima uh, and then the other three times are going to be virtual. So on the weeks when we come in, uh, you have a choice, Brandon, you can come in on either uh, Monday or Wednesday. And it would be better if you came in on Wednesday because we're short a few people there. But um, do you have a preference of those days? Well, I'm going to have to go Wednesday then if you need more people. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Now, um, is there anybody else who's in the class right now that wasn't here um, last Wednesday? 
uh, v Venus, uh, you weren't here, right? No, I wasn't here either. Okay, can I put you down to come in on Wednesdays when we meet in person? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to send this list to you guys anyway. Um, okay, is there anybody else who wasn't here or who came into the class after um, it started and so you didn't get put on this list? Okay, well, let me know. Um, so I will share my screen with you guys and show you the list so far. Uh, let's see. So I go to the happy zoom icon. Oh, looks like it looks like I have a chat message here. Let me see what the chat message is. That'd be awesome. Thanks. I have my own. I just need a new charger for us. I'm not sure how long it will take. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So sharing the screen. Uh, and by the way, if you've never had your sheen, uh, screen share take over your computer before, you just hit the escape key to get out of it. But um, you can see over here on the left, this is the list. Um, we've got Bill, Bree, Vlad, Trinity, Gabby, Jillian, Michael, Iman, and Abby on Monday. Carl, Ken, Max, Cameron, uh, D, uh, Dylan, Brandon, and Venus on uh, Wednesday. That's currently where things sit. And just a, a reminder, I, I think I have to turn this in today. I think today's the deadline. But... Um, Whatever day we have you down here, you're gonna. That's the day you're gonna come in all semester, and they won't let you change it for any reason. So, because of the whole COVID thing, and that they're doing, they're doing this so that they can track who came in on what day in case somebody gets sick. Then they'll know, you know, just look at the list and see who came in, right? So, uh, as far as right now, is is everybody okay with the days that you're on this? There's nobody that uh, is gonna blow a gasket or anything. Okay. All right, cool. Well, then we're good with that. So I'll send that in and we'll be done with that. And I'll send you guys a copy so you'll have it. Um, okay, so next I'm going to go to the class website. Um, okay, pima.dreamco.com and uh, just open up my folder here uh, for the basic audio production. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so we uh, finalized the in-person meeting schedule. And now I wanted to talk a little bit about project one. So the first project I asked you guys to think about is um, <clears throat> where you make a commercial, like a 30-second commercial where you, you know, try to sell a product or service and that <clears throat> it has audio with it. And that audio can be... Uh, you know, voiceover audio, it can be a dialogue, it can be uh, a score, a music score, and preferably, you know, at least two of those three, you know, at least a score and either your dialogue or voiceover. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about different ways that you can record some of that audio for, for your production. Now, what I wanted to do was just kind of go, go around the class and see if any of you guys have had any ideas, and maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your idea. If you have any visuals or, or a paragraph or something, a uh, description of it to show us, we could, we could take a look at that as well. Um, now, I know that we just met on Wednesday and we've only had a weekend, so some of you may not have uh, gotten very far in this, but for those of you that have, you know, we'll, we'll take a look. So let me just, uh, I'm just going to use my little meeting schedule here uh, to call people's names just because I've got your names on here. Um, so let's see. Uh, I gotta see if Bill is in here right now. Let me pull this down. Participants. Okay, I don't think Bill showed up today. Oh yeah, William. Yeah, he is here. Um, so William, are you there? Bill. Yeah, I'm there. Hi, Bill. Got mute. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Bill, do you have an idea for what you wanna, uh, what you might wanna work on for your first project? Um, yeah, I do. I was thinking about um, talking about the virtues of handmade soaps versus um, the uh, commercial soaps that are full of synthetic detergents and uh, kind of rip you, rip yourself up. I did put something in Google Docs about it, but it's not as uh, fleshed out as I'd hoped. But okay, there's some information there, and a kind of a start on my idea. Okay, uh, let me see if I can open up your folder here. Um, 
in theory, you should be able to. <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me log back into that. It's just a theory. Practice, maybe not so much. <laughs> Hard to tell. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me just go to my email here. Okay, I'm just going to search for your folder. So it's uh, William Wallace. Let's see. It's probably okay. under Wallace. Okay, here we go. Here's your email. Yeah. And W Wallace three. I'm trying to find your. Okay, here we go. Invitation to collaborate. So it's in this folder. Okay, commercial docx. All right, and now we'll try and make this bigger so we can actually see it. Okay, cool. So uh, is it okay if I read this? Sure. Okay, handmade soap is vastly superior to any other soap product. First, unlike commercial soaps, it contains no harsh synthetic detergents, which will dry your skin. Instead, it contains natural emollient oils that help nourish skin because of the way that it is made. This is not your grandmother's skin shedding lye soap. We precisely <laughs> control each ingredient to ensure that all the lye is consumed and natural oils are left to soothe the skin. Unlike the commercial soaps that use synthetic fragrances, natural soap makers use aromatherapy blends of natural essential oils. Buy it or make it yourself. It's easy to do. Your skin will love it. Uh, we begin with an image of washing hands or face with a natural soap. Then we look at dry, flaky skin from Syndet soap or maybe synthetic soap use. Uh, images of soft skin follows a picture of natural soap. Next, we show the equipment, a kitchen scale, Pyrex or plastic bowls, a stick blender and soap molds that you need to make handmade soap followed by a look at the ingredients, veggie oils, essential oils, and lye. Possibly a view of soap at trace ready to pour. We will show the soap in a mold followed by another washing sequence. The film will have the sound of water running followed by splashing as the rinse. We'll use grating sounds during the dry skin sequence, the stick blender sound during the mixing sequence. I'm going to need to look at how to pare this down to the essential elements and may leave out the soap making sections. I could just look at the products and its virtues. Okay, this is a great idea and it's a really well thought out um, uh, uh, summary here. So thank you so much for putting the time into that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put that out to you guys. Let's say that you were uh, you know, uh, an artistic director who was helping Bill make this right now it's going to be a 30 second commercial so what ideas do you guys have what what do you think he should keep in what do you think he should leave out do you like the idea uh do you think there are ways to strengthen it um, what suggestions do you guys have i, I want to know are you going to go like comedic or like uh, straight trying to make a like a real soap commercial type deal um i'm probably going to go fairly straight on it um, because uh, I mean, hand, handmade soap makers um, really do need the the business, and handmade soap is significantly more expensive than um, store bought soap. I mean, they're running about four to five dollars a bar, but the virtues of it are um, just beyond anything that you get in you get as a commercial product. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's interesting you asked that about comedic. When I started reading about uh, handmade soap, I, I immediately thought of Fight Club. Was I was I the only one, or did anybody else? Uh -huh. that? I thought OxyClean. Oh, OxyClean. Okay. Um, okay, so he's going to be uh, pretty serious about it. now. He's only got thirty seconds, and he's come up with a lot of ideas here. So, what what ideas do you think he should focus on, and what should he let go of in this summary here? Uh, Brandon, what do you think? Uh, let's see. Well, I like the summary, but I kind of think um, if he's going serious, then uh, okay. I'm just I'm just rereading it again to see if he mentioned anything, like if there's any disadvantages of like each soap. So. Of course, if it's serious, and I would like focus on all aspects of the soap, and whether it's good for you or not. But um, everything else is fine. I mean, 
in 30 seconds, I'm pretty sure he can do it. I mean, I could probably do it. But, um, uh, I mean, I don't got anything else. I think he can really just focus on the good and the bad and then show examples, imagery, and then whatever else he wants to add. Okay, uh, that's, that's good feedback. I think uh, I think he could possibly in here. He's he talked about maybe cutting out the making of the soap, and I think that might be a good idea. Um, I think kind of like you know Brandon just kind of zeroed in on um, what I think you have time for in this thirty seconds, which is show the good and the bad, as he said, um, you know, and then uh, uh, explain the benefits. You know, really really focus on the benefits for the good soap. Um, you know, and you might even consider. You know, you said that, that handmade soap costs more, costs significantly more than uh, the other kind of soap. You might even say that at the beginning and then hit all of these different points that make it so amazing so that it just completely, like you said, you know, when you said the benefits of it are so amazingly more than commercial soap, you know, that sounded very convincing to me. So if you could kind of show that, you know, you could even either say it or do it in bullet points or even just show images or some combination of those ideas. Um, I think you would basically sell us on the idea by the, by the end of it. In fact, when you were just describing it, I was thinking, you know, I buy commercial soap all the time, but um, there was this period once where I got a little allergy and I was like, what is that from? And so I just went and I changed everything I had to like handmade soap and like, uh, you know, uh, clothes, clothes washing detergent that was natural and stuff like that. And then I was like, wow, this handmade soap is really cool. It looks good. It feels good. So, uh, you know, but then I went back to buying commercial soap because it's just habit. So uh, I, I would personally like to know more about why handmade soap is so good for me so you could sell me on it. You know what I mean? Bill? Yeah. I just wanted to make a suggestion. Uh, you, ought, you ought to go on uh, YouTube and check out the Dr. Squatch uh, soap commercials. They're very much along the lines of what you're doing there. And yeah, actually, okay. they're pretty awesome. Perfect. Okay. Dr. Squatch? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. he's been around for quite a while, actually. Oh, has he? Yeah. Um, in, in one of my, in years past, uh, I was actually a, a soap maker and had a company that sold the ingredients for people to make handmade soaps and cosmetics. Oh, okay, cool. Now, as far as the audio on this, um, so you're going to do things like the sound of water running, splashing, grating sounds, uh, the, the, the sound of, of blending and stuff like that. Now, are you going to, do you have an idea how you're going to record that stuff? Um, well, I actually have a um, recording app um, on my iPhone that um, works really, really well. Okay. Do you know what the name of that app is? Uh, yeah, just a second. Um, let me bring that up. It's um, it's called Voice Record Pro, and let me see if I can get it up on the on the screen. Um, so when it's in, I don't know if you can see that. But it's got a view meter. You can adjust the levels on it. Okay. That for um, a bunch of different um, sampling rates and, and compressions and things like that. Wow. And uh, did you pay for it or was it free? It was free. Wow. Okay. So voice, uh, so Sound Recorder Pro or what was it called? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think just a second. Let me, let me get back out of it. Um, it's called voice record. Yeah, it's called. Um, it's called. Uh, did you say voice? Oh, record? voice record pro. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, great. So, um, anyway. Okay, so so that's a product that you can get. Yeah, the icon for it looks like. Um, oh, that little old old fashioned microphone. That old fashioned microphone. Okay, 
voice record pro okay um perfect so that's an option for you guys there's a lot of different apps that you can use for both the android and iphone and ipads and macbooks and all that kind of stuff there's one that comes on my iphone uh you know uh, let's see if i can show this to you uh there's one called voice memos it's this one right up here um that comes standard on the iphone and this one's really great, um, especially for recording something like a voiceover. You just press that little icon right there, and you get a big red button ready to record, right? You press the record button, and you start talking. And you can see, as I'm talking, it's, you, it's showing a sound wave um, of, of my voice, right? And as soon as you're done, you just press the big red uh, square at the bottom to, to stop. Now you can play it back, or um, you can easily just click on the name of the recording and then uh, hit a button to send it uh, via email to you know your computer or something like that. Or of course, um, you know you can also uh, do the air sharing with Macs and stuff. And of course, PCs have you know similar programs and things like that. So uh, and and the quality of this is decent. It's not like you know, super pro that you're going to put on a real commercial. But for the, for the purposes of this first project, you guys are welcome to use a phone if you want. Um, and like I said, you can just record, you know, everything into the phone, send it to your computer, and then I'm going to show you guys some programs you can use to edit the sound and everything like that to uh, make it volume higher and lower, cut out, you know, equalize it and put reverb on and stuff like that. But the phone, yeah. one of the things I want to show you today. Yeah, Bill? Yeah, you've... If you put a mic on this, on the on the one I've got, it, it comes out really well. I think it's almost as good as the Zoom recorders, except you don't have multiple mic inputs and that sort of thing. Right, and I've I've bought um, microphones for the for the mobile Apple products before, and there's really good ones. You know, it, it depends on how much you spend. I think I spent a couple hundred dollars once, and I got this mic. I'll, I'll show it to you guys, but it's just. Like it's it's digital quality. I mean, it's like CD quality, so it's it's super good. Um, okay, great. Thank you, Bill, so much for your idea. Um, and so maybe uh, for for next time, maybe just kind of refine that down. Uh, take out what you're going to take out, and maybe see if you can refine it down to a series of shots and sound effects that you're going to use with that. Um, okay, so let's see who's next on the list. Uh, we have Bree. Bree, um, did you have a chance to work at all on something? Uh, yeah, it's the commercial, right? Yeah, is it is it like in your folder or something? Um, yeah, I sent you an email. Um, so I was kind of just thinking of something like silly that I could do, and I was thinking about um, doing a commercial for like movies or a movie that already existed. So I was thinking about um, doing the movie Cats, but then I thought it would be funny just to do a commercial about cats in general. <laughs> um, funny. Yeah, so um, I would put together like a compilation of like little cat videos and um, it'd be mostly like sarcastic and um, silly, but. Okay, and, uh, and you got your own cat, right? Uh... I do. So there'll be a voiceover and good qualities, annoying traits of cats, uh, very low maintenance, randomly cry in the middle of the night, that knock stuff off your head. Okay, cool. I'm a, I'm a big cat fan, so I like this. Um, now, is your is your video going to be like pro cat, but like, oh, I love cats, but they do some good things and some bad things, but you should get a cat, or or is it going to be a love letter to cats, or what is it? Uh, yeah, it'll be like like pro cat, like. You should definitely get a cat. You know, they're good during quarantine. They keep you company. And then just to add some silliness, just talk about, you know, they're, they're a little bit of annoying traits and stuff like that. Okay. Um, could, could you, okay, this is great and everything, but since the, um, I'm wondering if you're interested in this, do you think you might be able to, to skew the idea a little bit more? And could it be a commercial for like the Humane Society or something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Um, because that way you're actually, in a way, selling a product. Do you know what I mean? Which is yeah, cats, right? Um, so yeah, uh, you know, all you would really have to do is, you know, add the the Humane Society logo at the end or or some information about how you can get your own cat. You know. Okay. 
Okay, that sounds idea. great. And and uh, and what are you going to use for recording? Um, I do have a microphone that I bought, um, so I might try that out. I have used just my phone and previous um, projects and stuff like that, and that works really well too. So, um, okay. yeah. Oh. Yeah, phones are great. They're so easy. We always have them with us. And of course, if you plug a microphone into it, the quality just goes through the roof. Because, you know, one of the things we're going to learn about microphones and everything is, um, you know, uh, the, the, you kind of get what you pay for when it comes to microphones. And on the phone, you know, the microphone is adequate because the phone does a lot of things. So it's just adequate, right? But if you buy a, a microphone, you spend $100 on a microphone or, or several hundred dollars on a microphone, that device is made to optimize, you know, what it does, which is record. And so you're going to get uh, really high quality stuff. Um, okay, that sounds great. Uh, all right, let's see who's next on my list here. Thank you, Bree. Uh, next we have Vlad. So I've been thinking about this idea, but I haven't really typed down anything at all. Okay. But I've been thinking about it like all weekend. I want to do like a a commercial on masks oh. but like but like not but i would probably talk about like the other advantages of wearing a mask other than you know the the current one like hey you could uh, all you could always dress up like a ninja you you could cover up your gross mouth <laughs> you could uh, sneak up on people very easily you could rob places yeah, I was I was thinking about that raw places one. I guess I saw some headline on the internet the other day that some guy just went into a place wearing a mask like everybody does and then just proceeded to rob it because you know the cameras couldn't tell who he was, right? I was like, okay, well there's that, right? Um, exactly. Yeah. So that sounds fun. Does anybody have any ideas for uh, Vlad about this? It sounds like it's going to be a funny commercial or questions for Vlad. Um, so what are you going to be selling, Vlad? Is it going to be is going to be selling the idea of getting masks? Are you going to be are you going to actually have a website that sells masks and then you show all the advantages? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll probably just like have like a picture. It's like, yeah, you could buy this singular mask. That that that'll be the product. This mask. <laughs> like it was be just one mask. Yeah, yeah, just just, okay. just this That's one mask. That's funny. Okay, um, I like that. And uh, and and what are you gonna do for audio? Probably a lot of like uh, voiceovers, like you would see in like infomercials. It's like me talking over some footage. Is like, hey, th this is what this thing, uh, this mask could do, and whatever. Okay, that sounds good. All right, cool. Um, yeah, well, if you get a chance, maybe write your ideas down. Uh, sometimes when you formalize the ideas in a document, it helps you uh, get get all your thoughts together in one place, and you can even start putting together a shot list and and uh, maybe some ideas about which audio sound effects you're going to use and things like that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Vlad. Gotcha. Uh, next, we have Trinity. Trinity. Hi. Hi. So actually, um, Gabby and I decided to partner together okay. for this project. Okay. So did you did you put anything in a folder? Yeah, we did. I sent it to you. I just sent it to you. Just sent it to me. Okay. Oh. Okay, there's nothing in the folder you, you sent me. Um so did, you email, did you email it to me? Yeah. All right, let me try. Oh, I see uh, something f from Gabby. There you go. Okay, this is it? Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, so you want to explain the idea? So basically, we're going to do like a commercial for a dream reading. Um, we're going to have like a voiceover that's sort of describing stuff. And then the end is going to be sort of like a person picking up the phone to do the like call like the dream reading place and it's going to be sort of like a old school VHS style commercial. Okay. That sounds fun. 
You can kind of look at the description when you go down more. All right. Okay. Uh, is it okay if I read this? Yeah. Okay. A girl thinking she is awake in the middle of the night due to her crazy vivid dreams, feeling she was falling, only to look into her mirror, touching the glass with her index finger and falling into her dream world. Sort of Alice in Wonderland theme. She sees a 444 number and then sees a lot of smoke and follows a blinking colorful light in the haze and foggy smoke. She crawls into a tunnel of strange lighting and she is dressed in glitter clothes and makeup. She keeps crawling, wanting to find the end of the tunnel until she falls under the tunnel and wakes up scared and curious in real life and immediately calls the number to figure out her dream's meaning. Okay, so the 444 is the, is the business that reads your dreams for you? Um, the 444 is like a spiritual meaning number, like an angel meaning number. Oh, okay. And then, and, but this is the actual number of the business. That's the right? number, yeah. yeah, that's going to be like the voiceover. Okay. Oh, this is the voiceover. So, uh, so we're watching her have a strange dream and the voiceover is saying, you know, describing, hey, you're having strange dreams, call us and we'll tell you what, what it means, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And then, um, let's see, develop sound effects and a score, background music. Okay, are you guys actually going to make the music? Uh, yeah, well, it's going to be uh, already like a song. We're just going to like distort it and make it slower. Okay. All right, and then you're gonna record dialogue of uh, people talking like the voiceover and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so do you guys have any feedback, any ideas for them or questions about this project? I'm actually interested to see the VHS aspect because I think it's a pretty cool uh, like little filter that's been going around. Cause like people are starting to use the older cameras and also like, uh, I guess, I don't know if it's apps. I don't know what you guys are going to be using, but I'm interested in seeing that. Yeah, do you guys know how you're going to do the whole VHS thing yet? Well, we have an idea of using a literal VHS camera because I have one, and oh, wow. if that doesn't work, then wow. we will do an app. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, it's always best to do the real thing if you can do it, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds great. So, uh, and you guys are going to use, like, is one of you going to be the camera operator and the other's going to act out the scene kind of thing? Yeah, probably. Or we're probably going to get someone to act out. Okay. Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> okay, cool. And then um, as far as the sound, the, the, the music and everything, you said it's going to be some kind of distorted slow. So it's going to be sort of this, uh, like your disoriented kind of music? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds really good. I mean, it sounds very complete, like you have your ideas. And um, I, you know, I, I don't know uh, that I can add much more to it, because I think you've done a really great job. Um, okay, anybody else have any ideas or suggestions for these guys? Okay, nice job, you guys. It looks really good. Okay, um, so let's see. Next on my list, I have Jillian. I emailed my idea to you. You just emailed it? Okay. Well, it should be in the drive. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, do you would you like to explain this to us? Um I just thought that um, since we wear a mask now, like every day, everywhere you go, you can't really tell what people's emotions are because you can only see their eyes. Uh -huh. So the idea is like selling masks that have facial expressions on them huh. and you would wear it based on how you're feeling. Oh, I like that idea a lot. Like you could sell, you could sell somebody a kit they would have like six masks on it, which would be the most common emotions or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, that's really great. I like the idea. So, are, and then are you going to show examples of these different masks and have like music that kind of fits those emotions? Yeah, I was hoping to like use my setup right here because I can change the color of the lighting. Okay. And make it like if you're mad, obviously you have the lights be red. Okay. For all the emotions, you know. And then... Uh, are you going to um, are you going to just draw the expressions on on uh, 
paper and put them on masks or how are you going to do that um my mom has been making a bunch of them so she's just going to make me a couple blank ones and i'm going to paint it on oh that sounds great okay and then are you going to do the music um are you going to play the music yourself or are you going to use some pre-recorded stuff um i'm not exactly sure it just depends on how long it takes me to paint the mask okay like if i have time it would be nice to make my own music but you know Right, but you may just spend so much time on the mass and the filming that you just have to use pre pre recorded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, is there going to be a voiceover? Uh, yeah, I was hoping to do something like that, like just talking about, like I don't know, like selling people to the emotion that they're feeling. You know. Okay. Okay. I think it's a great idea. It sounds super fun and very creative. And, uh, you know, I hope you get to the point where you get to make the music yourself, but I'll understand yeah. if you don't. And there'll be other projects where you can um, make music later on. Um, okay, very nice. Um, and I also want to mention to you guys, you know, I've said that this project is 30 seconds, but, um, you know, that's not an absolute. If your project, you know, comes in at 27 seconds, or even if it goes longer than 30 seconds, like 44 seconds, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I want it to be approximately 30 seconds. So if you want to go a little longer or shorter, that's fine too. Um, okay, this looks great. Thank you, Joni. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's go to next on the list is Michael. Hi, Michael. Hello. Uh, I was thinking of maybe doing something uh, automotive, maybe like a type of motor oil or windshield wiper maybe tire and i'll just do a bunch of different shots of like driving or just me or somebody else working on a car and i'll probably do my own sound effects and then i'll maybe do a voiceover and then uh, at the end i'll just put the logo probably. okay so you're gonna sell some some type of automotive part or supply kind of thing yes okay and then you, you, you'll be taking photos of, or video of you working. You'll be adding your own sound effects. And then some, some like a soundtrack, a score below it that just kind of fits. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, cool. And so uh, are, are, is it like a fake company or are you going to be doing an AutoZone commercial or what is it? I'll probably do some, uh, an actual company, whether it be like BF Goodrich or, you know, some – type of motor oil like royal purple or something like that okay and uh, and did you say voiceover there's gonna be voiceover yeah okay cool well it sounds perfect and uh so do you work on cars is that something you do yeah me oh. and my dad work on my car and his so it's Hi. what kind of car do you have uh i have a 01 z28 camaro wow yeah Sounds pretty cool. You should put that up as like the picture for yourself for yeah. this class. Okay, it sounds great. Uh, does anybody have any ideas or questions or anything for Michael? Besides, can I have your car? That that's my question. But um, okay, it sounds great. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. Next on the list, uh, we have Iman. Um, yeah. So, hi, Iman. So I just sent my project through um, email. Okay. Yeah, that one. So mine's like a product commercial about this um, I guess this item I found on Amazon where I'm going to try to showcase it, you know, the benefits of it. And I'm going to put it to music and it's going to be very short, very simple. Um, I kind of wanted to make it funny in the way that it's overly ridiculous. It's a commercial way too intense for this thing that only cleans laptops. So that's what I'm going for. Okay, cool. I, I like the way that you did this, um, this page here where you got the nice, Font and the graphic and everything it's it's very inviting it makes somebody want to read this okay so you have a black screen that fades up slow tempo music 
Uh, you show the oxy good grips, sweep and clean, strobe over the product with uh, high tempo music. You use some B-roll uh, using the product and storing it away. Benefits of how well the product works and how compact. And then ends with slow tempo. Okay. And then dialogue is the Ox OXO or OXO sweep and clean. Yeah. It's just one line. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, it says the commercial is way too serious for the product that has very intense and cinematic background music. Filled with commercial like B-roll of product the whole time. Very limited dialogue, but motivated by the music and B-roll. Meant to be ridiculous, in other words. Okay. Okay. So it's humorous and like, you know, it's like, it's like a giant fanfare and, you know, big, uh, big everything, but it's just for this little doinky uh, cleaner, right? Yeah, pretty much. All right, cool. Well, it sounds fun. It sounds like a good idea. Uh, does anybody have any uh, ideas for uh, Iman ways that he could make this even more ridiculous or any questions for him? Um, okay, I think, I think you have a really complete idea here and it looks like it's going to be super fun. Do you, have, do you have an idea for the music? What kind of music you're going to use? I mean, the actual piece? Um, no idea yet. Okay. I, I mean, I have like an idea category i guess in mind but i still i'm gonna probably change that up what's the category well very like i guess high bpm cinematic kind of music high bpm cinematic kind of music okay okay got it cool it sounds great and i think you're you're right on track perfect so i'm looking forward to that okay nice job uh all right and then let's see uh We've got Abby here. Hello. Hi. Um, I, I'm trying to remember who Gabby was working with. Uh, oh, oh, Trinity and Gabby were working together, right? Okay. Yeah. So Abby, uh, you are working by yourself. Um, I think so. Okay. And uh, have, you, have you got an idea or? Um, yeah, I put a small idea onto my Google Doc thingy, but basically it's um, dog treats. I really love dogs, so I want to do something with dogs. Okay, let's see. Sort of counterbalance the cat action that we have so far. I know, I was thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's like too much cats, you know, like Vlad has a cat. Cats are okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're not dogs. Yeah, I love dogs. <laughs> Cats are the best. Oh, wow. uh, you should help me with the dog commercial then, Gab. Yeah. You know what we should do? We should we should split people into cat people and dog people for the two days that we meet. Um, okay, Abby, do you want to uh, d describe your commercial? Oh, I just wanted to show, like, happy dogs being excited over treats and why owners should give, like, more treats to their dogs. I feel like dogs are very essential to companionship. And I just, I just love them. Okay. Okay. How many how many dogs do you have, Abby? I have two. They're small little dogs because, like, I, I, I don't know. I just love dogs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so so you're basically going to be selling doggy treats. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. So lots of cute, happy dogs. And then, you know, dogs are essential. Uh, make Your dogs make you happy. Make them happy. And then you give them treats. Kind yeah, of. exactly. Okay. Got it. And then we're, there's going to be voiceover. And some happy instrumental music in the background? Yeah. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. It sounds very cheesy as it's going, but I hope it goes well. Okay. And then uh, are you going to film anything, like film your dogs? or? Uh, I think I can incorporate them. <laughs> That'd be cool. It'd be fun to see them. Oh. Okay. Uh, anybody have any uh, ideas for, uh, for, Gat for Abby? Make it about cats instead. No. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's that's what your project will be, Vlad. That your second project will be to remake Abby's commercial with cats. Oh my gosh. Well, Gabby, I got three hey. dogs, little dogs, if you need them. Oh really? Yeah. I love dogs. Chica, come here. Let me see Chica. Oh, let's see. Chica. <gasps> come here, baby. You want to be in Gabby's commercial, huh? Say hi. Say hi. What a hi. cute dog. Oh, that is cute. She's like oh. a cat, but she's a dog. <laughs> she's cat's oh. best. You get the best of both worlds, right? Yes. Say no to cats, Chica. 
<laughs> That's funny. Okay. All right. Thank you, Abby. That sounds great. Cool girl. Cool girl. Okay. Uh, Carl, we're up to you. Uh, mine's in the folder and, uh, it's, uh, I, uh, you know, I got all the filming stuff down and the audio it's, it's called the therapeutic reemergence after the COVID. And it's about, uh, not Chica, but Chewy and Minnie who are both Chihuahuas. And, uh, you'll see a picture of one of them that was during the, during the coyote attack. I had to chase, chase him down and get my dog from him. Uh, coyote was carrying him away in his mouth. That's Chewy, but he's all good now, and he's going to be uh, Dr. Chewy and Dr. Minnie, and they're both psychiatrists. I got all, you know, I'll, I'll make all the photos of them and their graduation real quick, and it'll it'll be about their practice. Wow, it sounds great. Uh, I, I'm glad that, I'm glad Chewy's okay. Yeah. Uh, now, was he called Chewy before the coyote attack? <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes, okay. I was just wondering, he, is a, like, he got named like yeah. after a chew toy or something like that. No, he's uh, been one now. That yeah. He had like four or five broken ribs, uh, oh. all over his neck, you know. I literally had to punch a coyote to, uh, you know, chase, chase. I had to chase down a coyote and fight a coyote to get him to drop him. Unbelievable. Uh, so, For but you. thankfully, yeah, he's alive and stuff, so. He's good to go. Awesome. Many you'll see later. A lot of people that have been in classes with me have seen me take the dogs to be green screened. And wow. uh, due to the coronavirus, my assistant and I had not been able to work together. So I use a lot of B footage for that. And then I'll do new voiceovers with uh, music. I'll, I'll do the music myself, either via piano or uh, whatever, whatever other instrument I feel like, you know, sets okay. the stage. And, and you know you will be able we will be able to access Pima um, and of course you're familiar with the green screen room they have there um, yeah I have all that though I have a piano yeah. here and you got guitars it. yeah okay. so all right and I like the fact that you uh, that you were specific about the different uh, software that you're gonna use yes yeah definitely uh, I may not get into after effects because I might not need it you know but uh, if I do that's one that I'll, I'll put on the back road if I really need it Okay. Uh, yeah, Adobe Audition is one we're definitely going to look at in this class. Um, we'll talk yeah. about GarageBand, but of course, that's Mac only, so not everybody has uh, access to that. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Yeah, I know. GarageBand is awesome. GarageBand is awesome, and it's Big Brother Logic is what I use to do recording. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, very nice. It sounds like a great plan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Ken. Let's see. Let's see if Ken's still in here. Yeah, Ken's in here. Hi, Ken. Ken, do you have a, an idea for your project? Okay, I can see you talking, but uh, we're not hearing you. You're not muted, so I don't know what the issue is. Do you have some kind of a mute on your microphone that, that can be turned on and off uh, like a button? Uh, and if you can't find it, um, you can always just type into the chat if you like. Um, you can just go to this chat right here and type whatever your idea is or tell me if you want me to go find it in the folder and I can read it while you're figuring out the audio issue. Or we could come back to you if you, if you like. Uh, do you want me to come back to you? If so, you can just type that in the window here. It looks like he left the meeting. Oh, okay, and he's being readmitted. Okay, any luck now, Ken? Where did he go? There he is. Uh, let me see if he's talking. We can't hear him. Uh, gotta find him. There he is. Yeah, we can't hear you. Uh, no. So I tell you what, this is what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to go to the next person, and you go ahead and work on your problem. And then when I hear you, I'll stop. I'll say we can hear you, and then we'll do you next, okay? All right, sounds good. Okay, so next we have uh, uh, Max. Hi. Hi, Max. Um, I sent mine in the, uh, the docs, Google Docs. Okay, perfect. Thank you.
Uh, so mine is um, about uh, a water bottle. So I kind of just wanted to take, um, my purpose is just to take like a basic household object and try to make it as creative as possible and try to add um, like uh, colorful lights to it and um, music and just kind of challenge myself to try to make the best. I was also gonna do a paper clip, but I decided to just do a water bottle um, to try and make it just like as creative as possible as I can. All right, it uh, sounds like a great idea. I'm, I'm glad that you focus on the water bottle because it's, you know, it's easier to film something like that, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. um, okay, it, it sounds really fun. It, it almost sounds like you could, um, you could go just a creative route or you could even go the humorous route and say, you know, new from Ronco, the water bottle, you know, not only can you drink from it, it acts as a doorstop. It acts as a, as a musical instrument, you know? Are you, are you thinking of doing the, that route or? Um, no, I was just going to do just a basic kind of like um, maybe more simpler, but okay. like in a creative way. Right. Um, just like, you know, drink water, kind of okay. just encourage. Um, I do want to include um, like stay hydrated Arizona or I wanted to add something like that. Kind okay. of just encourage it. Okay. So it's just going to be uh, somewhat serious and, and then just showing creative ways to use the water bottle and then you know yeah. hydrated arizona okay kind of have a more creative way um to just have a household object into a creative form okay. it sounds <laughs> really nice and yeah. uh you got an idea for the music um i was gonna use um one of the websites that i have written down for music okay um, or tech check out like the free music on youtube okay um, as well and then I do want to try to transition like the water fall, the water bottle falling into a cup and it turning into water as well. I want to try that to see how it would come out. Okay, that's great. And, you know, of course, the phone is a great tool for recording yeah. sound effects. Um, okay, perfect. It sounds great. Anybody have any ideas uh, or uh, suggestions, comments, questions for Max? I think it, it, it sounds like a great idea and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And are you going to have voiceover too, Max? Um, I haven't thought about it yet. I was just going to do music, but okay. I don't know. I'll see as I go. If, okay. To add right. it. That um, sounds good. Are you going to use different colored lighting for the thing? or? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do plan on um, maybe in post while I'm editing, try to make it. Um, but I do have other color lights too, to try to make it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, is that you, Ken? Yeah, that's me. Okay, you wanna do yours now? Yeah, yeah, let's give it a shot anyway. Um, I did send you something, but uh, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't wanna read it. I'd rather just discuss it because I've, oh, no. I've thought it over since I sent it in there. Okay. Uh, essentially, my commercial is gonna be kind of a throwback to the cheesy late 70s, early 80s style commercials there. Um, Nobody's, you know, very few people in this class are going to know what the hell I'm talking about, but it's got to be kind of like a throwback to those old uh, Calgon commercials. I, I, I don't know if you remember those. Yeah, that's that's exactly my era. So Calgon, take me away kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the thought of the whole harangued uh, housewife hearing all these voices and going nuts. I'm like, you know, as far as uh, audio goes, that's, that's a really good thing to model on that. Uh, thought right. is, you know, but I'm going the kind of the goofy route and uh, parroting the whole uh, uh, semi-recent Karen phenomenon there. Um, maybe downloading uh, uh, Karen videos from uh, uh, from YouTube and uh, using their their whole "I want to speak to your manager" bullshit um, to be driving uh, you know somebody nuts there, and uh, you know going you know maybe having uh, music-wise some uh, uh, cheesy you know sort of uh, um, 70s ish you know commercial type music and yeah. uh, and then you know once the you know the karens have all been told to shut up maybe breaking with the hallelujah chorus or something stupid like that I, <laughs> it sounds funny. hell yeah so what is it you're selling exactly oh uh essentially it'd be a, a megaphone to yell at karens with yeah you know, i'm oh. calling it karen away <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's perfect okay 
Great. And then uh, uh, will it be, uh, so we know there's going to be uh, uh, cheesy music and then there's going to be the, the voices that are in the video. So is there going to be voiceover as well? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of doing some sort of cheesy announcer type voice from, from the you know, 70s type era. Okay. Sounds perfect. All right. Nice, nice, uh, nice, pl nice plan. I like your idea. Thank you. Um, okay, let's go to the next one here, which is, uh, let's see, we did Max. Uh, Cam. Uh, mine's in my folder. Yours is in your folder. Okay. Let me go there. So it's, it's for a service. Get the fuck out. Um, it's basically, you know, you, if you have guests that stay too long and you don't want to tell them to get out, you call this number and they'll send a specialist to tell them to get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to get out of, um, to get, out, get out of, out of to get out, Just to get out of your house. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm having trouble finding the, the folder right here is, um, what's your email address, your Pima email address? Oh, I still have my maiden name, so it's C S I L C O X. C S I L C O X. Like that? Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know why, but I'm not. Uh, let me make I sure. I want to a specialist because I'd love to be a specialist. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it sounds like maybe you can just explain it to us, uh, and then we'll look it up here. Um, so, uh, 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 so. Did you ever see, this is probably, I mean, I know this is before your time, but did you ever see uh, a Saturday Night Live skit called The Thing That Wouldn't Leave? Oh. I have not. Uh, okay. You might want to look it up on, um, on YouTube. It's, I think John Belushi was the star. And basically, you know how people come over to your house, like guests, house guests come over or whatever, and then they overstay their welcome? Yeah. Uh, well, he was basically, you know, that was his character, and he, he he did a pretty hysterical version of that. Now, is that kind of one of the ideas that you have in your uh, commercial? Yeah, it was supposed to be a very professional commercial. Um, and it's just like a, a woman talking, selling the product, and then like a gathering behind her. And then that's when the person comes in and yells at everybody. Okay, that sounds good. So, are you are you going to be using stock footage? Are you going to film something? Um, I think I can film it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then uh, and then uh, voiceover. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of music are you thinking? Of? Um, it's kind of elevator music, something gentle and professional sounding. And. Okay. Well, it's, it sounds great. It sounds like a lot of opportunities for uh, humor. Uh, does anybody have any uh, suggestions for Cam? Any ideas or? Uh, okay, I think it sounds like a really great idea. Uh, do you have Do you have something you can record with a decent microphone or? I have a phone that I'm just going to use. Okay. I worked well last semester. Okay, sounds great. Okay, and uh, I'll look. Um, maybe you can resend your uh, link, to re reshare your folder with me, and I'll look for it. Um, yeah, it, what was what was your email again? Uh, here, I'll just type it here on the screen. Well, it's right here. Uh, GJ, well, that's not it, actually. Um, let me type it. GJ, oh, I know. I'll just put it here in the in the chat. GJ Lamo at Pima.edu. Oh, you know what happens sometimes, Cam? And this is no follow of your own. I also have a personal Gmail account, and sometimes students share their folder with me, and it goes to my personal account instead of uh, the... Uh, the school account so that may be what happened um okay perfect sounds good uh let's see next we have uh d d have you got an idea right, yeah uh, um i believe it should be in your uh, folder or drive all right okay let's try this um maybe maybe it's spelled like this uh, no. oh, just try D Davis sixty. Okay, yeah, I found it. Okay. Okay, would you like to explain your idea? 
Yeah, so uh, I was going to plan on doing like a, a Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant slash Nike commercial because uh, exactly. he was one of my favorite players growing up. So um, what I wanted to do, let me pull it up on my side. There you go. So I wanted to have this shot in black and white um, and then have Kobe doing a voiceover for, uh, you know, kind of like a motivational and, um, you know, striving to be better because he has a lot of speeches about that, um, you know, the whole Mamba mentality. Thing. Uh, and then uh, what I wanted to be doing was running like multiple routes because I played football before. Um, routes in slow motion and have a comp- compilation of me like catching the ball. Um, and then at the end, you'll have Kobe's logo, the one on the top, and then Nike's logo up here, like after I catch my last pass. And then that'd be the end of the commercial. Nice. So it's sort of metaphorical in that like he's passing the ball to you, passing the torch to you kind of thing, and you're going to carry on with these motivations? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Now, I, I know that his nickname was Black Mamba, but I don't know anything about the Mamba philosophy or whatever. What's that about? So, it, essentially, it was just striving to be better every single day. So, every day you get better at something, at your craft. So, you know, for me, it's filming, whether it be learning how to, uh, you know, operate lights better or, you know, since we're doing audio, do audio better. Something, you know, just get better each day at what you're doing. It's something that he did when he was playing basketball was first year, um, he wasn't starting. He only played a few games, but he ended up in the all-star game. Uh, and what he did was every single day he'd go to the gym, do workouts, do conditioning, and then he would make an insane amount of jump shots. He would have to make the jump shots before he left, and then he would go to team practice. Wow. So he was doing that every, every, every day and it ended up being, you know, one of the best players of all time. So. Yeah. That reminds me a little bit of the, um, did you see the Michael Jordan, like six or 10 part series or whatever? Yeah. 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 You know, him, him going in and doing this insane amount of work before practice. Yeah. Uh, that's great. I think it's a wonderful idea. I have an idea for you, which you don't have to use. It's just something that came to me while you were describing this, but so the whole idea is, you know, the philosophy is to get better, right? Right. So wh- one, one way you could approach this commercial is the commercial could get better. In other words, it could start out with kind of crappy audio and crappy video. And then, and then you could have a Kobe Bryant quote or whatever, and then it comes back and now it's slightly better. And then another quote, and then it's better. And then by the end, it's this pristine, you know, HD video and perfect audio. And then the picture of you. Now, like I said, you don't have to use that idea, but it's just one thing that, that struck me when you were saying that. Um, okay, cool. Any Anybody else have any suggestions or ideas for D? Uh, and then, uh, so the music is going to be sort of inspirational music? Yeah, I was kind of debating whether it to be, you know, inspirational or like a piano. There's probably something that has like a crescendo at the end where yeah. it kind of, you know, has that little build and then fade out. Yeah, that's great. And it could be, you know, it could be uh, almost any genre. It could be classical jazz. It could be, uh, you know, current. It could be R&B, whatever, you know, whatever works right. for you. Um, okay, I think it sounds great. And it's a wonderful idea. All right. Um, let's see who we got next on the list here. Um, let's see. We have Dylan. Dylan. Hi, Greg. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Did you did you send me something? Yeah. So I put some I put a document in my folder, and I can explain a little bit further as well. So I was kind of doing I want to do something in the vein of like OxyClean guy and uh, Flex Seal guy. So very high energy and almost over the top for no reason. Okay. I saw this boat in half. <laughs> yeah. Like ridic- ridiculous over the top. Like wait, why did why did you have to do that? <laughs> Okay, so uh, you want to do you want to explain this stuff to us, or? So, I I know that everybody doesn't like smoking cigarettes, and especially people who don't like the smell. So this would be for people who don't like this. So let's say you're in a public setting or a party atmosphere of some sort, and there's somebody who's smoking a cigarette around you. This is where the cigarette fly swatter comes in. The <laughs> giant fly swatter, and you swap it out of their hand. I love it. Uh, so and so there's like you, you actually show the scene at the party and the guy's smoking and then there's the voiceover tired of secondhand smoke kind of thing that's exact yeah that's exactly what i had in mind okay 
and then you just whack, put it out of the guy's hand. Okay. Yeah, and then at, towards the end, we would be advertising the new jumbo. <laughs> colors, different instances, style. Well, people went like, there's a guy and a girl standing next to each other, and you have this big fly swatter, and it takes both of them out, right? Yeah. Or, or, or it could even be that the fly swatter takes the person out as well as the cigarette. So it's <laughs> like, just like, don't just get rid of the cigarette. Get rid of the person, the problem itself, which is the person smoking, right? Um, okay, it sounds great. And so you're gonna, uh, there's gonna be voiceover and then what, some kind of music in the back. I wanna do voiceover and then like over the top sound of effects as well. So like when I hit like hit the fly swatter, so it'd be like smack or like plow or whammo or something. Okay, and then at the end, is it gonna be sort of like a Ronco cheesy late night commercial where you know uh, you know the the fly swatter for nine ninety nine or but now or, or like nineteen ninety nine for the double fly swatter kit uh, but order now and get the jumbo fly swatter free kind of thing yeah okay very in vain of like the as seen on TV ads okay okay like at three in the morning you wake up and you're like who's watching these oh wait I am <laughs> <laughs> I know who is watching those. Like they've been talking about this my pillow guy for like oh my god <laughs> over a year. I have never seen a my pillow ad, right? But I'm I'm looking forward to. It. I should just break down and go look it up, right? He has an interesting my story. I'll say that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This sounds great. Anybody have any suggestions or questions for Dylan? Okay. I think it's a great idea. It sounds like it's very complete. You've thought it through. Uh, so it sounds good. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. Okay, and then let's see. Uh, we have Brandon. Uh, Brandon, I don't know if you've had a chance to think of anything yet. Aha, uh -huh, joke's on you. I did. Oh, uh, okay, good for you. Uh, so did you email to me or? Uh, yeah, I think I emailed you a filter like last week when I watched the recording. Okay, let's, let's, uh, all right. Why is Oh, I just looked up the Calgon uh, commercial. That was priceless. Oh, yeah. Calgon is. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> you know, the worst thing is, you know, like, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and, uh, and like, those commercials were, like, that was the state of the art. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you guys, look back, you're like, people actually watch these? You know, this was actually production quality? Or people actually but they them? stick with you. They stick with you forever. Dial, 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 Chevrolet, two blocks off the Santa Ana Freeway, 1118. Oh, I mean, come on. That thing stuck with me for 40 years. I mean, yeah, it's true. I don't know if you remember that. It's crazy. I remember that one, but what, one that I'll never forget is Mr. Microphone. Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you guys, if you uh, young folks need a, need a, a laugh, go look at Mr. Microphone commercials. Mr. On. Microphone. Oh, my God. It's frightening. Okay. And the frightening thing was, I was sitting there watching yeah, that. Going, God, I wish I had a Mr. microphone so I could be popular too, right? Okay. <laughs> He's got a GIF. He's got a GIF. GIF. Oh, is okay. it a GIF or a GIF? I say GIF because my last name is Gaines, not James. So, come on. Wait, are you are you the cat person? No. <laughs> okay, you count then. I'm the cat guy. No, I mean, I, oh, I've had cats, so like. Oh, on you're on the verge, bro. You're but on the verge. I've had I've had dogs too, so like, I'm like balanced, perfectly balanced. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> this came to me because while I was watching the class and you were explaining the project last week, I was watching Infinity War, and I'm like, okay, I need to commercialize something, right? So I decided, you know what? I'll just commercialize the gauntlet. So I decided to oh, make nice. a, like a, a comedic kind of thing or how the nice. Infinity Gauntlet could help you out in daily life because, like, that thing is OP. Uh, I actually do uh, have one right here. Here, I'll show it to you. Nice. Yes. Are you kidding me, dude? I am not kidding you. I mean, it's oh plastic. God, it's not awesome. metal. So. But I'm mostly going to do a voiceover explaining uh, how the Gauntlet can work for you and how the stones uh, work. And I'm going to add the sound effects. I'm going to use my new microphone to do the voiceover. And then I don't know if I'm either going to film new stuff or just use like the clips for the movies. I might do both because like, 
why not? Yeah. But otherwise, I think that's it. That's okay. just a simple idea. It sounds great. It's a really fun idea. And um, have you seen that? Uh, do you ever watch the Colbert Report? Or the, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert? I've heard of it, but I've never watched it. Oh, okay. He, he was doing this thing last week when the Democrats had their convention. The, the intro to him talking about the convention was they had taken um, the scenes from Avengers Endgame and they had put all of the Democrats' faces on all the heroes. Um, uh, it's, on, it's on YouTube. Uh, you can check it out. It's pretty funny. Um, okay, I think it's a great idea and you got so much material to work with and I'm jealous. I wish I had a gauntlet. Um, so, perfect. Thank you, Brandon. At, at the end, you should have stones sold separately. I was actually thinking that, too. So mm -hmm. That's a hysterical idea. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, Venust, uh, have you had a chance to think about this at all? Well, not really, but I do think about it right now as we're going over other people. Um, so, last year, I did a commercial on... Uh, some chips from Trader Joe's. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to kind of do a similar uh, commercial, just try to like outdo myself, kind of like do what I couldn't do in the first one, just to make it, you know, better. Like a, a Trader Joe's commercial? Yeah, it was about uh, corn rolled uh, tortilla chips. Okay, so, cool. That's I was going to try to do something similar, just try to make it better this time, kind of like improve okay. it. And there would be like music and, and voiceovers and stuff? Yeah, so the last one, I didn't have any, uh, it was just music in the background and a background TV. Uh -huh. I can make it, you know, have a little uh, kind of conversations and, you know, have some people talking in instead of being silent. Okay, sounds perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, now I was just going off my list here. Is there anybody that I missed? Anybody that didn't get a chance to talk or? Okay. Um, all right. Well, these sound like great ideas. I'm really excited about them. I can't wait to see them. What I would suggest for you guys is, um, well, first of all, if you haven't actually written anything down, please write something down, even if it's just a little summary like we saw today, just so that we have sort of a concrete idea to work from. Now, you can always change your idea, but, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? Also, those of you that, that have written something down, uh, for Wednesday, t take your written idea and take it to the next level. Okay, and what I mean by that is turn it into some kind of a shot list uh, and, and maybe write down the assets that you're gonna, that, that you require. Like, okay, I gotta go out, like I'll use D for an example. He, uh, he wants to find a kind of music that crescendos. So he could go out and he could find three examples. He could find like classical jazz and hip hop music that crescendos. And then, you know, next time he could even play those for us and see which ones we like, you know. Or he could just write them down and then make the decision himself. So, so what I'm asking you to do is take your initial idea and take it to the next level where it's a little more refined and a little more along the lines of a, a kind of a, like a, a shot list type of thing that you can use uh, to do the video. And, and I'll call it a shot list, but maybe an audio shot list, which would be like, okay, you know, in Dylan's, ca or in Dylan's case, he's going to need to get this to either get or make the sound effect of somebody being swatted with a fly swatter, maybe the sound of somebody screaming you know so so make a list almost like you're going grocery shopping of all the things you're going to need and then figure out how you're going to do it you know we're going to get those things um okay sounds great now uh i think what i'm going to do right now because we've been talking for a little while is i'm going to give you guys a 10 minute break and you can do whatever you need to and then we'll just uh get back uh come back at 11 15 and then we'll talk about uh, some audio stuff okay go ahead and take a little break Hello. So I'm back. I know some of you guys are still on break and kind of uh, sashaying your way over to the computer. So I'll start out kind of slow here and then we'll pick up speed. Um, so what I've got is a couple links I added to the website, um, the class website, about microphones. And what I wanted to do um, briefly is talk about mics that you can use for voiceovers and some of the differences without going into too much detail some of the differences between the different mics so uh, for example 
I added this link to the website, um, mics you can buy to do voiceovers. And if you click on that, um, it's basically a um, Google link to, you know, shopping for microphones. And you'll get the list of microphones up at the top, right? And I just wanted to point a few things out. Um, so first of all, since a, a lot of you are working on some type of computerized system, uh, basically most of you, one type of microphone you can get is a USB microphone. And of course, the USB microphone, um, like this one right here, is going to plug, is going to come with a USB cable. It's going to plug right into your computer or other device. It could plug into an iPad via one of those camera connection kits. Um, and it's just going to be ready to go. It's just going to, you know, communicate information over USB. It's going to be, generally, they're pretty uh, good quality. Uh, you can see this one here on Amazon. Um, it's $60, right? And so um, with microphones, just like so much else in life, you get what you pay for. If you pay $10 for a microphone, it generally sounds like a $10 microphone. If you pay $10,000, it sounds like a $10,000 microphone. Now, that being said, what, you know, what should you guys think about when it comes to buying microphones for school or for your film pro productions and stuff? Well, the best, the best rule of thumb I can give you is get the best microphone you can afford at the time, okay? So, you know, you're a starving student right now, and uh, $100 is a lot of money, but if you got a $100 microphone, if you, you know, got a, a birthday uh, check from your Aunt Glilda or something like that, uh, you want to spend it on a microphone, that microphone will probably be a decent microphone and last you for quite some time. And then down the road, when you're getting paid by people to do this, then you can get a 500 and a 1000 and a $2,000 microphone. You know, or if you're just footing the bill yourself uh, and a $20 microphone is all you can afford right now, well, that's what you can afford. And then you, you step up when you can afford it. Um, so the USB microphones are a, a nice, simple way to go because they'll plug right in. Um, other aspects of using a microphone, and I'm specifically talking about for voiceover recording, because we had a lot of people who were talking about doing voiceover. You can see this little setup right here. In fact, I'll click on this here so that this will get a little bigger. Um, some people will sell kits uh, that you can use to do recording, and they're, they're specifically trying to sell you a kit to do uh, either voiceover or maybe podcasting or something like that. So let's look at this kit right here and look at some of the components that are involved with it as soon as I can get past this damn uh, screen. Okay, there we go. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is this thing that is behind the microphone. Does anybody know what that is? This big fuzzy thing that's behind the microphone? Um, I think the sound oh. filter, right? Yeah, it's a sound yeah. barrier. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about sound. You know, obviously, this is an audio class. We're going to talk about how sound waves are created, how they move, and how they uh, are best recorded, right? Um, and so what this is, is it's essentially a sound barrier. And, and uh, what do you think it's doing to the sound? Blocking out outside sound, perhaps? Or can yeah. you get it? Yes, it's doing that. It's also... It's also absorbing a certain amount of sound. So let's talk about the different aspects of it. So I'm talking, and let's say that, you know, I have a microphone right in front of me like that one there. And then let's pretend that this little thing right here, I know it's not that, but let's pretend that this is the, uh, the, the, the foam backing, the sound barrier, right, behind me. So it's doing a couple things. First of all, as someone said, it's blocking external sound from coming through the barrier from outside and, and being picked up by the microphone. That's one purpose, right? But it's also made of foam. If I roll over it here, you can see some of the little foamy aspects to it. And it also has these little ridges in it. Now, the foam and the ridges will capture sound and absorb sound, right? So what that means is that the sound is not, it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, it's hitting this little barrier here and then it's, a certain amount of it is getting absorbed, right? Um, and a certain amount of it is being reflected back, all right? It's being sent, it's like, it's like if you put a chalkboard up right in front of your face and started talking, the sound would reflect off the chalkboard right back to you and it would sound kind of loud, right? So one of the effects of using a shield like this, a sound barrier shield, is that uh, you, you'll, you'll get a louder recording, but also, does anybody else know what else it'll do to your voice? Uh, and right now I'm talking about stop reflected sound from 
coming back at the microphone. Right, that's a absolutely correct. And then there's one more thing, and I'll give you a clue. It has to do with equalization. It has to do with everything from treble to bass, the different range of the quality of sound, whether it's low or high. Does anybody have a, an idea of, of how this sound barrier is going to affect the equalization of your sound? Does it help even it out? It actually, it makes it lower. It, what it does is it, is it highlights the low end, okay? Um, and you guys, you've listened to DJs on the radio. You know how they have that really deep, bassy kind of voice? Um, this kind of a setup will reflect back and accentuate uh, the bass uh, part of the, um, of the audio spectrum. So, so that bottom part of your voice will get louder. So a, a female voice would be f fleshed out a little bit. If it's sort of high voice, you, it'll add in some of the bottom. And if it's a male voice, which you know, they tend to be a little lower, it'll, it'll give you more depth too. And so it'll be more of like that DJ sound or whatever. Um, so those, I have one of those around somewhere and I'll have to dig it out so I can show you guys. But um, now there's a couple other components, part of this little kit here, right? There's the microphone itself, which we'll talk about in a second. But then there's this little bad boy right here, uh, which is in front of the microphone. And who's got a name for this thingy? Is it a windscreen? It, it's a windscreen, right? Or uh, it's got... Pop filter. It, what's what that? Is thing? Pop filter. Yeah. Oh, and there you go. Uh, it looks like uh, you've got one right there. Um, yes, it's, uh, it goes by a bunch of different names, pop filter, right, windscreen. And these things are not that expensive. You can probably get them for $20 on up. In fact, you know, this one, here's a kit. Uh, it's 100 bucks, and it comes with all this stuff, right? Now, uh, does anybody know what this thing does? Doesn't it, it filters out. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Dylan? Doesn't it basically catch, like, spit and other particles? <laughs> yeah, that's one way to say it. It, it. it does do that, but what it's really concentrating on are the, the sibilants. And okay. what those are, does anybody know what those are? It's going to be your P's, um, I think B's as well. I think S's, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yes, those are correct. Um, They're also called plosives, almost like explosives, right? And what happens is when you speak or sing, uh, certain letters, uh, S, uh, B, and P, for example, uh, what happens is they kind of explode out of your mouth, and that what it does is it pushes air pressure at a very quick rate towards a microphone and it can sound like a little boom or a click, right? And so what this uh, pop filter or windscreen does is, you know, you put the microphone on one side of it and when you're recording your voice, you have the uh, pop screen there. And the pop screen, of course, is just made up of a very thin, almost like nylon uh, material, almost like a a stocking, like a nylon stocking or something. And what it does is it slows down and it captures those plosives, the S's, the sibilants, you know, uh, and, and so removes them from your recording, which is uh, extremely helpful. And that's why you always see these things. You always see these things whenever anybody's doing a professional recording because it, it makes a big difference. Okay, and you can see that it comes on a, um, it has sort of a bendy uh, arm. And then this part right here, this uh, has a little, um, knob on it, I'm trying to show you this knob right here, a little knob and then a little metal pole that comes here and a brace. And what happens is this clips on to a microphone stand. Like you can see in the picture there on the screen that it's clipped onto the little microphone stand that's holding the mic, right? So these are a really key part of anybody's home studio and they're not very expensive, right? And they do a, a great job. Okay, now the that backing of sort of um, barrier, the foam barrier, it's not necessary. You don't have to get one of those. Some of these things are essential and some of the things are like a gravy, you know, the cherry on top, right? In fact, I bought one of these uh, and I'll show it to you. As I said, I bought one of these and then I started recording with it and I found out that it added too much bass to my voice. I have kind of a low voice anyway, so I stopped using it, right? Okay, other things that are pictured in this picture here. Um, there is something that's kind of similar to this. 
Does anybody have a name for this bad boy? Anybody know what this is? Well, I have that. It's like holding my mic. Right? Place. Yeah. And it has a special name. It's called a shock mount. S-H-O-C-K. Okay, does that clue you guys into what it does? Let's see. Can you see that it has these little rubber band thingies right here? It holds a uh, kind of vibrations from uh, when he's speaking. So instead of like vibrating and kind of like, so that's why it has rubbers to like, uh, kind of like a holding place and move it slow, kind of stabilize it. Yes, perfect. That's exactly right. So sound is vibration, right? It's, it's, your, it's air uh, coming from your diaphragm up, moving past your vibrating vocal cords and coming out through your mouth. It's going through the air and those, it's making sound waves that are vibrating in a certain frequency, high or low or in between, right? And then they hit things. They hit, they hit walls and they bounce around. They hit a microphone diaphragm and that diaphragm vibrates and turns that signal into an electrical signal which it sends to the recording, right? And that's, you know, that's a very brief explanation. We'll get into more detail about that. But in addition to your voice vibrating, everything else in the universe is vibrating too, right? The, uh, if you're in a room uh, with kind of a wood floor and the wood floor extends out into the hall and your sister's walking down the hall, when she's walking down the hall, her steps on the floor are causing the floor to vibrate and that's making a sound which is uh, coming into your room, right? Or when, uh, if you live, if your house is right, you know, your room is right by a major street and a giant truck goes by and it, it literally moves the room a little bit. Or like in my old studio where I was 100 feet from the train tracks, you know, the, every time the train came by, everything would move, right? So in order to, uh, to suspend and stop those vibrations, you use something uh, called a shock mount. And what the shock mount does, it's a microphone holder, but you can see that it's got, you know, these plastic rings and what happens is there's these little rubber band thingies. I know it's hard for you guys to see. I can show this to you when we're in person. But there's basically rubber bands holding the center circle, uh, sort of floating the center circle in the middle there. And what happens is when you put a microphone inside of that center circle, it's just floating uh, via those rubber bands. And so now if you accidentally hit the microphone stand or if a truck goes by or whatever, what happens is those vibrations start in the floor, they move up the microphone stand, and then when they get here, they sort of get canceled out by the fact that this thing is floating. You know, everything else vibrates, but this stays uh, more stable. Now, nothing's perfect. It doesn't remove every single vibration, but it does a good job of getting rid of a lot of them. So a shock mount is a really also a critical piece uh, to have for your home setup. Now, uh, so we've talked about that backing barrier. We've talked about the pop filter. We've talked about the, the shock mount. Now, of course, we need to talk about the microphone, right? Now, here's a little kit, like I said, that you could get. I'm not necessarily recommending this kit. It's 100 bucks, um, and, you know, probably 30% of that is all the external stuff, and, you know, 70% of it is the microphone. Uh, now, let's go back to this list of mics. And let's look at some of the different ones you have available here. So here's one where you're spending $100 just for the microphone, and it's something called a condenser microphone. Now, we'll talk about the difference between dynamic and condenser mics, but the basic rule of thumb is condenser mics are almost always better than dynamic mics, and they almost always cost more. So once again, it goes back to a theme I'll be repeating, which is you get what you pay for. Uh, you know, you could buy a $20 condenser mic, uh, or you can buy a $100 condenser mic, the $100 one's gonna be better. Um, now, we also have these things called, uh, let me go back one here. Um, this one right here, which is called a large diaphragm condenser mic. And you can see that that's you know, $60 more than the one next to it. A large diaphragm means that you know, the diaphragm is a thin piece of material, almost like a, a vinyl kind of material, very thin that vibrates and that collects the sound, collects the vibrations from your voice. The larger that piece is, the, the more accurately it can capture more sound. And so a large diaphragm mic is going to be better than a small diaphragm mic and is going to cost more. So that's why you see this one costing 60 beans more than the other one, right? 
Now, uh, let me just go over one more uh, thing here and see if there's anything else here that we want to talk about. Uh, okay. Um, everything else looks pretty generic. Um, what I do want to do is go to this other link that I put on the site, which is top mics for recording voiceovers. And this is one of those top 10 lists that you find all over the internet, right? And this is the top 10 best microphones for recording voiceovers. And they show you some different examples, right? Now, um, this one right here, I happen to have this microphone. It's called a, uh, it's by a German manufacturer called Neumann. And these microphones are revered for their quality and they are not cheap. This, the microphone that looks like this that I have was 750 bucks, right? And I use that for recording vocalists, for singers. Um, now you can get microphones that are very, very good that will meet your needs for doing overdubs uh, and voiceovers uh, that are much, much cheaper. Like this blue microphone here is really good and it, it doesn't cost anywhere near that. Now uh, here uh, in this article, they have a checklist for the kind of microphone you might want to get. Of course, your budget is always a consideration. Um, the type of microphone, and we talked about, I just briefly mentioned the fact that condenser microphones are head and shoulders above dynamic microphones. So if you can get a condenser, please do. Um, they also talk in this article about the microphone preamp or audio interface. Once again, the more you spend, the better you get. And then here's other things that they're talking about, USB microphones and stuff like that. So let's go down and let's look at some of these examples. So there's this company named Blue that makes microphones that are super good for doing podcasts and voiceovers. The Blue Yeti Pro is one of those. And they go into the details of it here, right? Um, and then uh, let's see, if we wanted to, you know, see the price on something like this, we might just open it up in Amazon. And the Blue Yeti Pro is super pricey. It's 400 bucks. So that's going to be out of uh, most of your guys' range. Um, here we've got a Rode microphone. You guys are probably familiar with Rodes because they're used in, uh, for recording audio for video a lot. This is also a great one that comes with a shock mount and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming this one is going to be uh, close to the price of that other one because they're probably, you know, the ones at the top of this list are going to be uh, more expensive. So this one's, uh, it's a significant drop, 229. You can see right here that when you buy it, it comes with a, a kit, which includes the pop filter and the shock mount, uh, which is super nice, right? Um, okay, uh, and I'm not saying to you guys that you have to buy, go out and buy a microphone for this class. I'm just saying that these are the elements of a good microphone, right? Um, here's one called the Focusrite Scarlet. And one of the things that's different about this one is that it comes with a really good preamp. Now a preamp, preamplification is what preamp stands for. A preamp, what it does is it takes the microphone signal and it basically amplifies it up to the level to where it can be recorded. If it's a good preamp, then you're going to get a really good quality sound. Now this one right here, the Scarlet, uh, has a good reputation. It looks like it's unavailable. They're out of it, but uh, somebody's selling one for 269 So once again, it's that price range of a couple hundred bucks, right? Um, and so I won't go through all of these, but, um, you know, you can see this, this is nice because it has a little um, microphone stand that sits right on your table, like many of them do. And this one is a USB one, so I would assume this one is going to be much cheaper. Let's take a look at that for you guys. Uh, yeah. So here's one that might be within a price range of somebody that's willing to spend a little money, right? 150 bucks, right? Really good quality microphone, comes with the stand and the USB. You can, of course, buy a pop filter for it. You could, of course, buy a shock uh, you know, mount for it if you wanted to. But 150 is a really, it's a really good price for getting into a decent microphone, right? So like I said, I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, here's the blue microphone. This will be the last one I'll show you. This one is, is uh, a really great starter microphone for those of you that are, are just getting started in this process. Um, so here it is, 50 bucks. Now that sounds uh, uh, like something that you guys might be able to afford. I think, Brandon, you just didn't you just spend 50 bucks on your mic? Yeah, I, I bought mine and it came with the, the filter and the stand and the shock and everything for like right. 45 bucks, so. Right, so perfect. And, and it came like in one day, so. 
Yeah, that's hard to beat. I mean, you go on to Amazon and, uh, you know, you find one of these kits, uh, you know, for 50 bucks or whatever, or maybe just spend 50 on the microphone and buy the other things yourself. And you're definitely in the door with getting a, you know, definitely a much higher quality sound than your phone or even your computer. Uh, and, and, and it'll get you into the realm of starting to do this, you know, moving towards the direction of doing professional voiceover type of work. And once again, you can use it for things like classes. You can use it for, uh, if you do podcasting, uh, the, you know, if you record dialogue, you can have people sit in front of this. Uh, there's a lot of great uses for it. Okay. So, um, you know, check those articles out when you get a chance, or I'm sorry, there's one article here that we went to and the other is just sort of a general shopping list on Google Mics. Check those out. And if you've got a budget for it and you're interested, you know, spend a little money and get a decent microphone and you'll see the quality of everything you do improve. It's, it's well worth it. Okay. Um, last thing I wanted to do talking about microphones before we move on is just show you a couple of different kinds. Um, and there's a bunch of different microphones we're going to look at, at uh, in this class. But um, this first one that I'll show you, it's got a little dent there. Uh, let's see if you can see the brand there. It's called Shure, S-H-U-R-E, right? And uh, this is the uh, venerated Shure SM58. It is a microphone that, that almost every single band that has ever played any music anywhere is familiar with because it's a great sounding vocal mic. It costs a hundred bucks, which is a very reasonable price for a good mic. And it's practically indestructible. You can take this thing and you can throw it across the room. You can drop it off a stage. You can hit your drummer with it, right? And all that's gonna happen is it's gonna get a dent in the grill here, but the microphone's gonna keep working, right? Now, does anybody know what kind of microphone this is? And I'm talking about a dynamic or condenser. Okay, so Dylan, were you going to say something? I'm not sure to be honest, actually. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and define a, a dynamic microphone versus a condenser microphone, right? This particular microphone is what's called a dynamic microphone. Now, dynamic microphones generally cost less and they're lower fidelity, which means they don't sound as good as condenser microphones. Now, the reason that this is a dynamic microphone is because of its uses. Microphones are created for certain industries, right? This is created for bands and for PA systems, you know, people that are doing announcements, uh, you know, for President Obama when he comes out and talks to an audience and then does a mic drop and it hits the floor, right? What's great about these, they can hit the floor and you can pick them up and they still sound great, right? So, um, you know, this is the microphone you get if you want an all-purpose microphone that can be used for uh, live performance. And like I said, it's a dynamic microphone, which means it's built to last. It, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking kind of thing, right? Now, um, there's a different kind of microphone, which we'll see some examples of later. It's called a condenser microphone. Condenser microphones are generally much more expensive and they give you a higher fidelity sound. And the difference is in the components. In other words, this one has a small diaphragm that is held, you know, uh, very securely in this microphone so that it can be dropped and, and the microphone won't get damaged. It will still work. Condenser microphones are much more fragile. They have a, a, a very um, thin uh, diaphragm, which is a, a membrane of material, you know, like a synthetic material, which is very lightly held uh, inside the capsule of the microphone so that it's very susceptible to vibrations, right? Which means it's an excellent microphone. It picks up all kinds of subtleties of your voice and of violins and other uh, instruments, right? But condenser microphones are very fragile and if they get dropped, they can break, right? So what you'll find is condenser microphones are the ones that are used in home studios. Uh, they're used in recording studios, but they're generally not used out on the road you know, unless it's a super big production where everybody's taking great care of things uh, because of their fragility. Okay, so condenser microphones, expensive, sound great, dynamic microphones, uh, affordable, and can take a licking, right? Now, here's two other microphones I want to show you. They, they both also happen to be the Shure brand. This one is an SM57. 
uh, and it has a unique shape. Uh, it's just sort of a, you know, almost like a, a rectangular shape. This is used, it's also a dynamic microphone. Uh, it's used to record things like drums uh, and put in front of amplifiers uh, for music performances. Uh, of course, the Shure, which you looked at, the 58, has the distinctive round top. So you can often identify a microphone just by its shape. And then this is another, uh, this is another Shure SM58, but this one is a wireless microphone. So it's got uh, a battery. Let's see if I can unscrew this thing. Okay. So it has a couple of batteries that sit in the sides there. And um, then it's got a little on-off switch right here. Let's see if I can turn that thing on. You see the little green light there? And what happens is you take this microphone, which looks a lot like the Mr. Microphone I was telling you guys about earlier, and um, you combine it, you pair it with what's called a base station. And a base station is a little tiny uh, piece of electronics that plugs into the mixing board and it uses, wi it uses a wireless signal to send the sound from this microphone to the base station, which then goes into the mixing board. Now these wireless microphones, this once again is a dynamic mic. All of these are that I'm showing you. This is also for vocal performances. And th this something like this will run you uh, several hundred dollars because you're paying for both the mic and the base station. And then the nice thing is the singer can walk around with it without uh, a, a cord being attached to a cord. And, and get some good quality sound. Okay, so that was just sort of a brief overview of some different kind of microphones, pointing you to some mics you could consider getting if you're interested and have the money uh, to, to make a nice little uh, sound setup for yourself for doing audio recordings for your film projects. Now, um, the next thing I wanted to do yeah. was, um, okay, there's a question here for me from Max. Oh. Um, he says, is Pima renting out any audio equipment? Um, not currently that I know of. Um, uh, the the only and I I mean Pima doesn't actually rent out anything. They check out stuff to uh, to students. Now I'm not sure what is the deal with the film equipment right now. I mean they must have some system for checking it out to you guys who are taking film classes uh, because you know obviously you have to keep making films right. Um, but I'll have to look into that because obviously they have some audio recording things over in the film department too. And I'll check into that, Max, and, and let you know uh, if you guys are able to check out any audio equipment from them. Okay. okay. Um, now, yeah, the next thing I, I wanted to do... Oh, I'm sorry. We can't hear you, Bill. Did you want to turn off your... Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, go ahead, Bill. Is it working now? Somehow you're, you're muted. Hmm. Because I... Uh, I can see what you're showing us, Bill. Uh, you're showing us a I can hear him. for a windscreen. Yeah, I can hear him, yeah. too. Does and I have one of those myself. I had it just here a second ago, and I just took it off, and it seems to have vanished. Oh, here it is. Uh, so what Bill is showing you guys uh, is, uh, or what he was showing you was a windscreen for a microphone, and his is what we call the dead cat variety. Uh, it looks like a big uh, sort of a dead cat uh, uh, that, you know, is just big, a furry thing that stops wind uh, from hitting the diaphragm, the microphone. Here's another one, which is just foam. And uh, he's showing how that goes over the microphone uh, and then it protects the microphone. And then he's got a little clamp there, which is um, probably the way that you can hook the microphone onto uh, a stand yeah he's got a little and there's a little screw port there where you can screw it right into a mic stand and then of course there's the little electrical uh, plug in there which will take the signal from the mic and send it down to the recording yeah uh, bill i'm not sure if your audio went out but maybe you can check ar check around with that and see what's happening you could also try jumping out of the class and coming back in and, and see if that helps. Okay, let me okay, try that. showing that to us. Um, I think you have a okay, muted. Okay, so what I want to do now was I wanted to move over to this Neil Young article, um, which I, I asked you guys to take a look at this um, and told you that we'd talk about it a little bit. Um, so let me go ahead and pull this up. And uh, did, did any of you guys get a chance to look at this article? 
Eh, a little bit. I only yeah. read the beginning of it. But that's... Skimmed it. Uh, I don't know who New okay. Neil Young is. Uh, really so, um, hmm. Who said they don't know who well, Neil Young is? Well, I tell you what. If nobody read this article, I think what I'd rather do is maybe ask you again to take a look, take a look at it, and we'll talk about it on. Can hear any of us? So can you hear me now? the article is linked to from well, the class website. I read the article. Um, and I read it as well. I also yeah, read it. Just... Okay, now I just heard your audio. Thank you. Okay, so I'm sorry, uh, Trinity. You read it, and who else? Cameron. Carl. Okay. Carl. So, um, all right, great. Um, okay, so great. So we can talk about it right now, and then those of you who haven't read it uh, can uh, can can. Neil Young is a smart, evil genius. Yeah, he's kind of all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So, what were your opinions, uh, Trinity? Did you have an opinion about this article? Um, I thought it was just kind of interesting, especially in the beginning, how he was talking about like new age music, specifically like Spotify, and he's just getting really mad about it. Because I know that it's a new sort of, not a new topic, but it's a topic that's, I guess, a bit more relevant is, um, like, how does music sound on different forms? Like, vinyl and cassettes are coming back because people want that specific sound and that specific time. Right. Um, but also, like, you can tell in the article that he's just, like, he's really mad about how music is now. But I think at a point... Um, if you want to stay relevant, which necessarily isn't his like idea, but if you want people to still listen to your music, I think at a point you have to go to new mediums just because that's how we're moving forward. Yeah. Well, I think one of the, one of his points is that, um, when you listen to vinyl, um, and he says anything digital is crap. Um, quite clearly, um, even in the, the documentary about the recording studio. Um, the problem is that in the good old days, they had very limited ability to do digital. So they made some bad choices. And right now you can, um, if you have a, a, a good system, um, you can hear the difference between vinyl and CD but there's not much difference. But when you go from CD to something that Apple sells you um, over um, the iTunes store, you can tell there is a huge difference in quality. Yeah. And then when you go down the, feed, the feeding chain to uh, Google streaming or one of the streaming services, it gets worse. And that's where that's his real complaint about modern music, not about the music itself, but the way that it's recorded and presented to to us. Well, he's he's actually created his own lossless systems on a digital realm to do uh, compete against those guys. It's just that he's Neil Young, he's not Apple, and you know Jobs, so he kind of lost out with his pokey or pocky or whatever that you know what it was. Bull or whoever. No. Yeah. He, he um, created his own MP3 like thing to combat against the degrade degradation of the music. Uh, it was basically a service where, uh, like an MP3 service, it's lossless uh, capturing. You know, he's invented all kinds of crap. He's a crazy genius. And you got to love him and hate him. You know, it is what it is. But I understand exactly what Bill's saying. Uh, I'm not sure a lot of uh, the youngsters know who Neil Young is. I do. Uh, I'm sure the teacher does and Bill does, but uh, you know, he's always been like that. He's always been the uh, rebel and he's a smart motherfucker. Excuse my language. <laughs> All right. I'm micing myself. But so um, you can go lossless. Yeah. You on can, some that, of the modern formats. So let me ask some of the younger people on this uh, video. Um, how do you feel about, I mean, Trinity expressed herself very well, but um, you know, if you had the choice, to you know have music streamed to you that was the quality that you're used to uh, or to pay more and get a uh, sort of a much higher quality do you think you might be interested in in the paying more or are you guys okay with what you're hearing um as somebody born into the digital age honestly i don't notice much of a difference and i'm not a big music freak i enjoy music but 
I mean, maybe if it wasn't much of a price difference, I would. But if I can get millions of songs through Spotify, and I can understand what he's saying, that there is a difference, but I've lived with that my entire life. I don't really, I can't really tell the difference. Yeah, and I think that was a big part of his point, is we're educating a whole generation to accept what he thinks is uh, sub-quality music. And that bugs him because, you know, he spent his entire life making high quality music as have uh, most professional musicians. And so you're missing out on all the nuance and subtleties of this fantastic music they created. And that's breaking their hearts, you know? Uh, but, but then there's reality, which is the reality that you're espousing, which is, Hey, we grew up listening to this music. This is what we're used to. And it sounds fine to us. And we're not going to pay a lot more for anything else. So get over it, you know? Um, and, and personally, I think that, one of the ways that higher quality music will come to us is if it comes to us sort of almost secretly uh, as broadband access, you know, uh, increases as you can put more information through the pipes. Um, the services like Spotify can start streaming high quality audio and maybe not even charge you very much more for it. Maybe just, maybe just eventually add it into the program you're already paying for and then suddenly everything sounds better uh, and they basically snuck it up on you by, by improving the technology, you know? Um, what other thoughts do we have from you guys about this article? Aren't the, uh, the streaming now, like before the artists, um, before Spotify and Apple, they weren't um, being acknowledged for streams, like as opposed to now the streaming you know, the more streams an artist has, the bigger, like, it it counts for them. You know, it gives them money and stuff. Yeah, at, at a certain point, they switched over. Um, but what happened was, you know, and we'll talk about the history of music and everything. Uh, I mean, we talked about, last class, we talked about the history of music up until the iPod, basically. And, and now we have to talk about the rest of it. But, um, yeah, essentially what happened was, you know, music music went digital we talked about the digital age music went digital when cds came out right and then the next evolution of music was sort of the napster era when music started to get downloaded uh and so first there was napster and all of those uh software clones of napster which allowed you to download songs mp3s for free right so they went from cds to basically being in the cloud and then just being passed around the internet right well, what immediately followed that was uh, the iTunes store. And Apple capitalized on that. They talked to all the major, six major labels and said, look, man, people are getting your stuff for free, but we've, we've surveyed people and we found out that, you know, they like getting free music, but they have to search all over the internet for it. And sometimes they download a music file and it turns out to be a malicious malware file that screws up their computer. So we, we determined that people like free, right? But they also like convenience. And if instead of a song being free, a song costs 99 cents, but you can get it at the click of a button, a lot of people would switch over to that system. So Steve Jobs convinced the six major uh, music publishers to get on board with him to sign agreements. Steve Jobs set the price at 99 cents per song. And this is how he did it. He went into like a Starbucks type place and he bought a cup of coffee and it cost him a dollar. And he said, if I'll pay a dollar for a cup of coffee, somebody else will pay a dollar for a song. That's how he set the price at 99 cents. Uh, I think new songs were $1.49, you know, uh, at the start of the iTunes store. Anyway, so everything moved over to iTunes, which was the king, you know, downloads was the king for what, 10, 20 years or something like that. Uh, probably 10 years. And, um, uh, then we moved over to streaming, which is where we are now. And this takes us up to Max's point, which is when we moved over to streaming, it's almost like radio, you know, it's like radio through the internet, right? Now songs are just being played and people can just tune into them, right? So how do you compensate the artists? Well, it's per stream, right? And the, the, the number of uh, the, the money that artists get per stream is extremely low. It's something like 0. 0.00001 cent per stream or something ridiculous. So, uh, you know, as Max said, uh, artists had been negotiating with companies like Spotify to try and get 
the money up a little bit more. Um, but that's how a lot of artists make their money these days is they get paid a small amount of money per stream. And when they get a bunch of streams, they get a decent amount of money. Okay. Um, also advertisement. Yeah, advertising, right. And, uh, and of course, before pre-pandemic, a lot of bands had to go back out on the road and tour because they made their money off of ticket sales, uh, sales of music at concerts and merch sales, right? And actually streaming for a lot of artists, even big artists, you know, like, uh, like Eddie Money, who, who passed away recently, who had a string of rock and roll hits over his career. Um, he ended up going back on the road because he wasn't making enough money from the streams. And so, you know, and he was probably in his 60s or, or older, and he ended up going back out on the road to try and make money. Uh, and then what happened with all these artists that were out on the road was the virus hit. And now that income stream of touring and merch sales was cut off from. So, you know, a lot of musicians and performers are really, really hurting during this uh, season. Okay, any other feedback or commentary on uh, this article and Neil Young's uh, audio player? Okay, um, thank you guys for reading that. It's interesting stuff. Um, those of you who haven't read it yet, take a look. It's well worth the read. Okay, um, I want to switch it up here a little bit, and I want to show you guys a little video. Um, so what we're going to talk about is we talked about um, recording audio for some of these projects on your phone. And, of course, we can do that. It's a super easy way to record. It's going to cap out the quality at a certain level. You know, you can get semi-decent voice recordings off of your phone, and you can use those for voiceovers and school projects and everything. But if you're doing, of course, a professional commercial or something, you know, you want to have much more professional equipment. The microphones we looked at a little earlier, you know, that I linked to from the website, that might cost 50 bucks or more, that's definitely a step up from your phone. That's the direction you want to be heading if you want to do professional stuff. But let's take a look at a little video about Steve Lacey, a successful musician who records all of his music on his iPhone and is in fact successful. So let's, let's take a look at this uh, little video here. After the, after the commercial. God, that looks good right now. Okay, let's see. If you're ordering McDonald's and your friend says they don't want fries, Liar. Or else. Everybody wants fries. Hell yeah. You may not know him yet, but you probably know his music. He's part of the band The Internet. He's a producer with people like J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, and he just put out his first solo music recently. I'm about to be crazy. <laughs> oh, and he's 18. You might notice there's all this studio equipment behind him. Steve doesn't use any of it. Well, other than the swords. I'm going to show you how I make music on my phone. I'll show you a little bit of the process. Lacey records all of his music on his phone. He's used lots of apps before, but GarageBand is his favorite. Okay, let's start off with a simple drum loop. After the drums. Then he plugs his guitar into his iPhone using an iRig cable. Then I'll put the melody. Then he adds his vocals. Lacey would rather sing straight into the iPhone's mic, holding a pop filter and getting right up close. As he works, he just stacks the tracks on top of each other, one by one, in garage band. I like to, you know, make wherever I am, so, when I'm at home, and my phone was my first before I started going to that studio I was making. Beats on my phone, like just, just making beats on like the apps and like some drum kits and stuff. But I got this piece called the iRig. I saw you can plug it into your iPhone, and then I was like, oh, they got amps on here. See what cool guitar sounds I can get. Oh, this seems cool. Like, nope. Lacey's kind of a big deal now. 
he could use other equipment. But he likes making music on his iPhone. There's even something about the sound that just feels very Steve. He calls his style plaid, you know, like the shirt. Plaid is my genre. I found that out at a, I was thrift shopping and I was in the Pendleton section. As I realized, scruffling through the shirts, I'm like, this kind of looks like how my music sounds. Because <laughs> if you listen to a couple of songs, it might sound like there's a lot going on, but it doesn't clash at all. And and, and plaid, that's you know, it, it's a it's a lot going on. All goes together to be one like I don't know, pattern, you know. Um, and that's what yeah, I call I call my music. <laughs> Okay, um, so what do you guys think about that? Really cool. Shows you how far the yeah, technology has pretty come. cool. I watched a bit. If you're ordering McDonald's Sorry. and your friend says they don't want fries, get them the fries. Or else, you're fried. I'm hungry. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. I thought that was pretty inspiring, though. Class will be over soon, and then you can go get your McDonald's fries. Um, okay. Hell yeah. So, uh, was anybody inspired by that at all? Any of you guys musicians? I was. Yeah? Uh, it's kind of yeah. cool, isn't it? Why was it inspirational? Well, it gives me a little more hope. Honestly, I... Uh, when recording instruments, I feel like sometimes I can't do it at all, and now I feel like I have a little more access and I guess uh, more tools now. And there is a lot more ways than I thought before. Yeah, uh, you know, we're gonna talk about recording studios here next, and uh, the fact that I want to show you that video first because he's got his recording studio in his pocket, and um, you know, all he has to do is come up with the ideas and get some kind of instruments that he can plug in and he's good to go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, were you going to say something, Bill? Um, yeah. Well, that little microphone that I was showing you before yeah. has an adapter so you can plug it directly into your iPhone. Oh, that's amazing. It and was about 30 bucks. Well, it was 30 bucks. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. The technology is so good nowadays that, you know, even for 30 to $50, you can get a, a decent low-end mic. Um, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a Boya, and it runs um, and it runs off phantom power, too, so you don't even need any batteries for it. Okay, and let me explain what phantom power is. Uh, it's also called 48-volt power, and what it is is the power for the microphone comes from the mixing console. It actually shoots the power down the electrical cable. So then you don't need um, batteries or anything for the mic. Um, and some of the really good microphones, the condenser microphones, a lot of them are phantom powered like that because uh, what it does is it allows them to make a higher fidelity, high, higher quality microphone uh, and then uh, offload the power to the mixing board. Uh, and it makes just for a better experience recording the audio. Um, okay, so I just want to show you a couple other things and... Um, I'll probably let you guys go a little early so that you can go get me your McDonald's. Uh, okay. Um, Talk about product placement, huh? Yeah, right. Uh, I should get a kickback from those people. Um, <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to show you uh, a couple of uh, – I've got a couple links here which just go out to Google and do a search for two kinds of recording studios. One is what we call a do-it-yourself or project studio – and the other is a professional studio. So let me just click this link right here. And, uh, you know, what we'll do is we'll go down here to the bottom. i got to scroll down a little bit. And when you think of a professional recording studio, uh, are these the kind of images that pop up into your mind? Yeah. Mostly. Yep. yep. Like Sound City. You, you imagine this really huge mixing board you imagine uh, sometimes, you know, beautiful wood floors and paneling. You always think of the big glass, uh, sort of the glass window between the control room and the person who's recording, right? So 
these are our images of, uh, in our minds and in reality of professional recording studios, right? Now, in a professional recording studio, they're going to have uh, an incredible amount of equipment and expertise that you, they would take you a lifetime to get. I mean, microphones that cost, you know, two, three thousand, five thousand a piece, uh, an engineer who's been doing this for 30 years, uh, a mixing board that they don't even make anymore that has like a vintage 1960s sound, a studio that was uh, created in such a way that it optimizes the acoustics of the performance. That's what we expect, those kind of things from professional recording studio, and we pay for those things. Prices in professional recording studios can be hundreds of dollars an hour, right? Uh, locally, in Tucson, you know, Tucson doesn't support that kind of spending, you, you're more likely to find a professional recording studio for $80 an hour uh, to $80 to $100 an hour here in Tucson than several hundred. Uh, but, you know, you go to LA, New York, San Diego, any of these, even Phoenix, the bigger markets, you're going to pay more. Okay, so that is, you know, our idea and the reality of professional recording studios, right? Let's take a look at some images of what we call DIY, do-it-yourself, or project recording studios. Okay, so you see right here, somebody's like building a studio in their garage or something. You can see here, this might look like something one of you guys has in your room. You know, you got your desk and your monitor and your speakers. Look at this guy over here. He's got a homemade little um, microphone shield there. Uh, and so all of these little examples here, this is what we think of when we think of a do-it-yourself or what's called a project studio, right? And these are perfectly valid studios. And in fact, you can spend nearly as much money on a home studio as you can a, uh, a professional studio. You can look at this guy here. He's, he's probably put in walls and uh, two different panes of, of different thickness glass at a certain angle. Uh, you know, in between rooms, you can see he's got a nice mixing board and professional speakers. So, um, you know, the, the point I'm trying to make about the difference is that you can build your own recording studio and the quality of the technology has gotten so high and the prices have gotten so low that you can actually produce professional sound at home, right? And who's the best example of this, the artist who's come out in the last couple of years? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, the band? Good band. Uh, I was looking for... Uh, a young female singer. Ooh. That narrows it down. Is it Grimes? There's still a lot of those people. Okay. Please don't say her name. She made her entire album on GarageBand. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking of Billie Eilish. Oh, okay. So Billie Eilish recorded her first album in her room with her brother Phineas. Wow. And, and they used, and it won like four or five Grammy Awards. And, you know, I mean, plenty of people have recorded in home studios previous to her, but she was the first one that really set the dividing line between like, okay, nowadays, anybody that puts a little time and money into their equipment and, and has quality, you know, skills when it comes to songwriting and recording can actually produce top tier albums that, you know, uh, are basically at the top of the industry, win Grammy Awards. So, um, you know, regardless of whether you're a fan of her or her music, there's no doubt that they accomplished that task. And so that's the current state of audio recording. Now, you know, when we talk about audio recording, obviously music is all audio recording, so that's a good example to go to. But this also extends over into recording for film, right? Whether you're recording dialogue, sound effects, scores, it's the same deal. The same type of equipment is affordable to you now. You can get a Mac or a PC, you can get a, a small keyboard that plugs right in via USB. You can get microphones very inexpensively. Uh, you can get preamps, special effects. The software is incredible. Uh, you know, it's, it, you know, the sky's the limit with what you can do with audio these days. So I just kind of wanted to point that out to you guys. And we'll, we'll get in, into more specifics about this as the class progresses. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, pretty much, uh, like I said, uh, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give you uh, guys, let you guys out a little early today, so you can go get some lunch. But um, what I would like you to do uh, for Wednesday, as I said earlier, 
is if you haven't written down an idea for your first project, write it down. If you have written down an idea and we, you know, we've discussed most of your ideas today, take it to the next level, which is make a shot list, um, which, you know, basically says, you know, what you're going to film, um, you know, maybe in what order, maybe what location, you know, uh, and also a very key, what audio you're going to collect and how you're going to collect it. You know, are you going to make your own sound effects? Or are you going to go out to the web and try and find uh, sound effects you can use? Are you going to make your own score, your own music, or are you going to try and, and get some? Now, there's a couple resources I can share with you guys. Um, let's see. Let me go down here to After Effects. Let's see. Shot list, storyboard, and other templates. Um, okay, so if you go into the resources section of the class website, under After Effects here, there's um, something called Shot List, Storyboards, and Other Templates. And... Uh, it's trying to go to this website, I think. I don't know what it's doing. It's like, okay, there it goes. Um, and you can go to this website and you can download uh, templates. These are like little PDFs. And uh, you can get a template, which is like a shot list. Um, let's see. Okay, camera shot list right here. So let's preview this. So... Uh, this is super small. I don't know if I can get it any bigger. Okay, yeah. So, you know, we don't need to see the details here, but basically it's just a grid and it allows you to put in, you know, the, the scene number and the shot and then, you know, uh, additional information about that. So this is something that you can use if you want to download this little template and use it as a way to just get some sort of organization going with your project, right? What shots are you going to take? What order? What equipment are you going to need? Things like that, right? Now, um, when it comes to actually making the shot list, um, there's another link here. How to make a shot. Okay, that, that page got, um, got uh, pulled. So, unfortunately, we won't be able to look at that. But I think most of you guys, because you're, of your association with film, are um, uh, familiar with the idea of how to make a shot list. It's basically a numbered list of the shots you're going to take and, and, you know, what angle you're going to use, what camera, what lighting and stuff. And as I said, do the same for the audio. You know, where are you going to do sound effects? What are the sound effects going to be? Where are you going to do a score, a musical composition? Where are you going to do dialogue? And, and what's that going to sound like? So see what you can put together for Wednesday. We'll take a look at that. And, you know, we'll see your project kind of coming together. I'll give you little deadlines like this as we progress. And then, you know, once everybody's got enough information where it looks like you're, you're either out there putting your project together or you're ready to go, I'll give you a final deadline for the project and then you can just work on it, right? Um, okay, any, any questions about any of that stuff? Okay, all right. So as I said, uh, I think I'm going to let you guys uh, go out a little early today. Uh, thank you so much. I love your ideas. I think the project's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to seeing them. So um, that's going to be it for today. So you guys are free to go, and I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Max. Peace. Bye, Carl. Bye. See you. Have a good one. You too. Okay. Bye. I'm going to go watch Cora. Bye, Bill. Bye, Greg. Bye, Dylan. Take care.